<laughs> All right, so here you are, almost a hundred days in. Um, That's right. Yeah, it's exciting. Good for you. Um, so, so it, it was always a dream for at least for a long time. It was a dream for you to be speaker. I always wanted to be speaker of the house, and I always wanted to be a member of the legislature from the time I was a kid. And uh, it, uh, it's a it's a level of government where you can actually make uh, some very significant changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not like Congress where you have to be there 80 years to do it, although I'm pushing 40. <laughs> no, actually, a little more than that if you count the judicial time. But it, it's, a, it, it's a real opportunity to do, and in this case, what has to be done in Ohio is not small. Right. We right. have, uh, we have uh, 400,000 people that have been unemployed uh, under the last administration, and we have uh, 600,000 uh, total that are unemployed. And we have to get Ohio back to work. Um, so you're you're a speaker in such a tumultuous time. <laughs> is it, it is a bit that way. Is yeah. the dream is is the reality as good as the dream? Even though it's yes. it's quite yes, stressful. Yes, it is because the challenges are there, uh -huh. and I have wonderful caucus members mm -hmm. to answer those challenges. Um, but, uh, the gentleman who was just there, he and I have had. Uh, good friendship over many years. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's one of the most liberal lobbyists there is. Yeah. And uh, he and I worked together to try to get rid of payday lending, for example. I remember and, that, yeah. And it was a great war. And uh, so, <laughs> like, uh, like him, I have these people who have run who are absolutely remarkable. And it's a, it's a different house than it has been in recent years. Uh, we've got a physician. We've got, um, uh, who incidentally uh, has three tours of Iraq as a flight surgeon, teaches medicine over in Athens. He's a county coroner, was, before being elected here. And uh, he just is a wonderful guy, and right off the bat, when he hit the door, he wanted to get on top of the problem that we have with ethical drugs, pain-relieving drugs and so forth. And uh, the bill passed the House within a month and a half of him getting here. I am very, very hyper, and uh, I want to get these things done. And uh, kicking the can down the road is not why I'm here. I'm here in order to do things. And he's, he's a classic example. Here's a guy in his freshman term uh, getting that kind of legislation passed. Uh, in fact, it was so uh, important of a bill and so meaningful that for the only time that I, since I've been here, which is uh, 67, that time uh, the governor came down and watched the whole floor debate. Really? He sat on the floor uh, wow. in, 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 in my chair. The speaker has a chair on the floor, so in case he wants to go down and make a speech or something, well, he can do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, obviously, I'm ordinarily up on the rostrum. <laughs> but, uh, that's just an example of, of people being able to get things done right mm -hmm. off the bat. You go to Washington, probably not. <laughs> so I, I, it's, it's been a wonderful thing for me. So let's talk about that. You know, I, I think it's fair to say this has been an ambitious uh, first 100 days. There's been yes, a lot is. going on down yes, here. Yes, it is. Um, you know, are, is that a good thing? You know, are, are you guys taking the time looking at all these important oh, issues? Yeah. yeah, the hearing. Well, uh, just to give you an example, mm -hmm. ordinarily the committees meet three days a week. Mm -hmm. The budget, com budget, the finance appropriations committee is meeting five days a week, and they're uh, also meeting uh, in terms of planning and so forth. Uh, you can't have a, a, a quorum; you can't have a majority of a committee uh, meeting behind closed doors. But they're meeting to set their schedule and stuff, which is very important. That that mm -hmm. that has to be done, and uh, inter interacting with the uh, chairman of the committee who's been a member since 1980, and a very dear friend. And uh, the uh, chair, vice chair, who does school finance, and he's, uh, he's been chairman of the finance committee in both houses, both the House and the Senate, and he's now running the subcommittee on schools. We place a high priority on schools. And obviously in Medina County, that's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, those, those guys are, are doing a heck of a job. And then the subcommittee chairman. So we, we really are able to, by having five-day week, 
we really are able to do things that any other session of the assembly could not have done. Um, so tell me, tell me about your life. How is it different now, as speaker? <laughs> you know, are, I'm guessing you're a whole lot busier, and you were busy before, I'm sure, and you're a whole lot busier. True, now. true. I, I, I uh, at this point, uh, am uh, working here in the Capitol mm -hmm. five days a week. Uh, before uh, it was a three-day week. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, uh, I work Saturday and Sunday on the telephone with my staff, and they fax things to my home. And we confer on the telephone about the things that they fax to me. Mm -hmm. And we're working partly on what went on this week and partly what's going to go on next week. We have to schedule things. And uh, one of the things that I believe in strongly is that you don't want to hold the members up. I've never gone to the roster later than the time the session starts. It starts at 1.30. Mm -hmm. So there we are. And we start at 1.30. Uh, I've never uh, started my caucus. Uh, it's important that we not waste the time of people who have so many important things to do. And so that, that's part of why we have to be conferring and working out schedules and so forth. We can accomplish so much more that way, where people know that they have to be there when things start or else <laughs> uh, the train will have left the station. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to think here, is this the, is this the old... Uh, Mike, is this the old schedule? We've, uh, I think the numbers are on there that have reflected some change, but we'll be over 30 if you're talking about number of bills. Yeah, the number of bills passed through the House. Last session, uh, four, that passed through the House February. No. You got to help me with this. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you're right. At this point in the last General Assembly, yes, that's right. I'm sorry, through the end of. Through the end of March, four right. bills have passed through the House, and right. currently we've passed. Actually, that number has increased because of this week, so we're right. almost at 30. Wow. Um, well, almost seven times, well, seven times as much has been happening in the last, in the first 100 days as did the last General Assembly. You got into this a little bit before, but why, why is this needed now? Why is this efficiency and quick action needed now? We have 600,000 people in this state out of work. Mm -hmm. We have problems that where they kick the can down the road for a number of assemblies. <clears throat> we right now are facing the problems of the pension systems, which is for the state troopers, they have a pension system. Public employees of all kinds have another one. State teachers' retirement is another one. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, the uh, police and fire and the school employees' retirement. They are not adequately funded. We are working on that, and as we started at uh, January 15th, roughly, <clears throat> I called all of the pension systems in and I said, this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. We have to fix it, and we need to fix it in a way that is permanent mm -hmm. and not just kick the can down the road. So we're, those are the kinds of things. There, there are about 850,000 people covered by those pensions. So. Other states' pensions are bankrupt. We're not bankrupt. But we definitely are underfunded, and we need to fix that. <clears throat> we have to fix it now. Uh, so far as the $8 billion deficit that we face, which is just to me mind-boggling, um, that's 18% of the budget. It's not there. So we have to make adjustments in the uh, expenditure levels for all kinds of things. In other words, cut the budget. We also have to create, without increasing taxes, no tax increase, we also have to create means by which more money is available for budget spending. Mm -hmm. uh, during the last session, they flat spent $8 billion they didn't have. And so here we are. And uh, we have to do everything we can to remedy that. And I'm particularly concerned about uh, school finance, and that's going to be a toughie. Well, since you're talking about it, um, go the governor's solution and suggestion to it, is that acceptable to you? Is that uh, or Overall, it's very, it's, it, it's well done. Overall, the budget? Overall budget. Okay. Um, so School-wise, um, they get a lot of cuts. Um, do you think that's acceptable? Should that be re-examined? I think the way for me to respond to that is, we're working on it. Okay. 
So how are you guys working on it, the budget in general? Um, well, we have the five-day-a-week sessions. Right. We have hearings of the full committee and hearings of all of the subcommittees. Uh, we're looking for ways that we can uh, not spend certain monies that are, were in previous budgets. In other words, we're getting rid of some programs. Uh, we're also obviously going to have to make cuts. Um, we're making fewer cuts, I think, than most people uh, thought could be made. In fact, Bill Faith, who was just here, a good a dear friend of mine, he's a, a liberal uh, lobbyist for uh, people, for the homeless and so forth. Uh, and Bill uh, famously said, well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, I can live with that. He, he didn't, he wasn't going off into outer space or anything about it. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, Nobody, nobody wants to cut anything. We have to get rid of certain programs. Mm -hmm. We have to make uh, cuts in other programs. But uh, it's not something that uh, uh, we're wild about doing. It's just that we don't have any alternative. Or we'll raise taxes, and if we raise taxes, then we're right back in the cycle of businesses leaving the state. National cash registers now in Atlanta, Georgia. They were mm -hmm. here in Ohio 125 years. And they're now down in Atlanta, that's their headquarters. Uh, they had 800 employees down there Dayton when they left. Uh, we have, uh, I won't get into the details, but we have other companies that have left Ohio. And, and uh, we just can't continue that. Uh, we have uh, about a third of our young people who graduate in education are leaving the state. Um. Now, talking about cuts, um, just this week uh, you had people protesting and um, you said th there are more, more th you made cuts that you pe people didn't even think you could make. Um, do you think, what do you think of their reaction that, you know, they said this just they're, can't... They're frustrated and unhappy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't fault people for indicating that they're frustrated and unhappy. I'm pretty frustrated myself mm -hmm. if people during the last administration would have done what they should have done. We wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. Um, do you think the but the cuts should cuts still have to go forward though? We're well, either going to do that or we're going to uh, say goodbye to more companies. Okay. Um, so speaking of protesting, Senate Bill Five. Yeah, well, that, that caused protesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How? What? What was the mood around here um, at that time? Well, first of all, there are a number of us who had misgivings about it. Mm -hmm. It came to us from the Senate in a certain form, and we did our best to, we made a number of changes, I think about 14 changes, which included, for example, allowing collective bargaining. Uh, we made changes to allow bargaining about safety equipment for safety forces. Uh, that, that was very important to me. Uh, we, uh, I've got a lot of relatives in the police. We, uh, made in that uh, 14 changes a number of things that when I met with the people who were uh, subject of, of it, uh, that were uh, something that they felt was inappropriate or unfair or whatever, and uh, so we made those changes. Uh, frankly, we could not uh, change the program much more and still get the votes in the Senate. We had votes in the House, but uh, the Senate was... Uh, I don't want to say deadlock, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> they only had enough votes to pass it in the first place, so we had to be careful. Now, I think the poll was taken before the changes were made, but right, th right. there were the polls that said the majority of Ohioans sure. don't don't agree with Senate Bill Five. Sure. Um, do you think Do you think those changes addressed the, a lot of the concerns that were? Well, we've got a lot to do to have people understand what the bill did. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Uh, I met with teachers who told me that their pay was going to be cut by 50%. They got, <laughs> you know, we ain't sent them that information. Well, no, it's not going to be cut at all. There's language in the bill that says whatever the pay is right now, it continues through the life of the contract, of course. That's in the U.S. Constitution, not to mention the Ohio Constitution. That was how, that's how it is. However, uh, if people are, you know, certain of those things, we've got a, a job to do to explain to them. But that's that's not what we saw here at all. 
we're not trying to cut people's pay or anything like that. What happened in 1983 was that they adopted legislation which created a situation in which the one side of the table, the employee side of the table, had more power than the employer side of the table. And uh, that's not what the National Labor Relations Act is about. What happened at the end when there was a deadlock between uh, employer and employee, it went to an arbitrator and arbitration, uh, if that sounds like arbitrary, you got it right. And it was arbitrary. And so we ended up with a lot of decisions which were, well, they couldn't be funded. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to have a much more fair and equitable situation. Besides that, the people who were paying the public employees, for example, didn't have pensions mm -hmm. like the public employees had. Uh, they did not have the bargaining power that the public employees had. So one group of people were the beneficiaries of this uh, lopsided law, and the other group of people were paying for it. It wasn't fair. So you're saying this almost rolls back the 1993 law, goes in the other direction. 1983, right. Um, what about the governor? What's your what's your relationship with the governor? Well, I've known the governor since he was a kid. And, uh, oh really? Oh yeah. yeah. How young? He worked over in the Senate as a graduate of, of he just graduated from Ohio State, uh -huh. and his job over there was uh, to be a legislative assistant. Wow. And. Uh, the governor is about as spontaneous a guy in politics. I mean, he says just what he's thinking. And uh, he has a lot of backbone, and he wants to do things for Ohio that are going to put our people back to work. And he's willing to do whatever is necessary to get that done. And, and so he's, uh, he's, he's a guy that is sacrificing. He's, he's willing to make tough decisions, as opposed to the last administration, which wouldn't do anything. Uh, except spend whatever money the federal government sent them. It, 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 it's just, it's unthinkable to me what happened. Because they had enough money to carry over for two sessions, mm -hmm. but they didn't spend it. Uh, it's uh, sensibly. And so we end up with this huge hole. Um, yeah, he, he's, uh, he's very personable. If you have a chance to be around him, he's funny. And uh, he. Uh, but if you get him off on the subject of people having to have jobs, he gets serious in a hurry. How, uh, how's your working relationship? You guys... It's good. It we seems... meet every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sometimes I have to say, you know, whoa! But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, it, it's a good relationship. Where, where do you guys differ? Well, um, I, if I were to, to characterize it, uh, I would say that it's probably a situation in which I favor incentives, mm -hmm. and sometimes the governor would favor mandates. Not often. We don't we don't differ very much, mm -hmm. but in that regard, and and uh, part of that's because I come from Medina County. Mm -hmm. uh, Medina County is unique in the state. It's unique because all of our schools have uh, are rated excellent. Mm -hmm. Every school in our county is rated excellent. What a tremendous commitment that's been from the teachers and the taxpayers. and uh, it, It's the only one out of 88, for crying out loud. So we have that in Medina County. We also have initiatives, which other counties just haven't undertaken. We have a sales tax to, uh, uh, to support school construction and to do capital improvements. We have, in addition to that, uh, uh, financing for... Uh, solid waste disposal, which is unique. Uh, we have uh, a drug enforcement program, which is, uh, I mean, Medina County's just done an awful lot for themselves that other people wait for somebody else to do. And uh, oh my goodness, we got a federal grant, or oh my goodness, you got this or that. So, uh, so that gives you a different perspective. You know the local people can do these things if they want to. And uh, so I favor giving people incentives so that they can see that they could reach out and achieve. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Can you name any kind of examples where that might apply? Uh, well, probably one of the best ones is uh, our Educational Service Center, ECS. 
In that operation since the 70s, the schools have cooperated together. Mm -hmm. And in that cooperation, they have done things that other counties still haven't done. Now, there'd be people who will say, well, you ought to mandate that on the schools. Make them do it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think that's the way it should be done. The local people have control. And I'm a, I'm a Jeffersonian, and I believe that the people, the people rule. And therefore, if you leave it up to them, they'll do, in most cases, the right thing. And if they don't, the beauty of local government is you're going to know that the county next to you is doing that. And they're having that accomplishment. And so I think it's very important to, to allow people to use their incentives. For example, just simple examples. In Medina County, we don't have buses from two school districts going up and down the same road. Mm -hmm. they, the buses from one district go down and pick up the young people on both sides of the road. And so you don't have buses blowing out extra gasoline and so forth. So in Medina County, uh, when Wadsworth was able to get a right-of-way over to Akron, they came to all of the schools in the county and they said, that right-of-way lets us put uh, electronic uh, uh, lines, uh, if, if you will, uh, it was a fiber optic cell, cellular right. lines, from Akron University to every other uh, yep. county in, in Medina County. Yep. And those are there. And they're, they're operating. Why, why didn't Wadsworth say, we got more than anybody else? No, that wasn't their instinct, it was to share. And I think those are things that are being done. The example I always give that's the best one of all is the volunteer fire. If they have a fire in a given township and they need help, they know that the other townships will send their departments to help. And it happens over and over. Thank God for it. <laughs> you know, we have a, a situation because of that kind of cooperation that shows what government can be when it's run uh, on a, a, uh, an incentive basis rather than on a mandated basis. So, Speaker, we got to get you out on the floor here. Okay. I'm going to make a speech. Yeah, there's about 500 kids running around. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to babysit them? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> All right, one, one question. Sure. Um, like you said, it's been you know really ambitious and you guys are getting a lot done. Is it, is it going to calm down? You know, or are you guys going to keep on going with lots of plans? Well, we've got lots of plans. Uh -huh. We sure do. And, and yes, it will keep on going. I'm going to get my members out of here this summer. We have family. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in a position where this work interferes with their families and their businesses. On the other hand, we're going to keep on working the way we are working. All right. I appreciate it so oh, much. So, so good to see you. So good to see you. So you all are joining us out on the floor so as well, right? Yeah. The chair recognizes Representative Call. Is there a quorum of the House present? The chair recognizes Senator Bell. Senator, is there a quorum of the Senate present? Since there is a quorum of the House and the Senate present, we may proceed with the business at hand. For 59 years, we have always recognized an individual for this prestigious award. This 60 award goes to a group of loyal Taiwai volunteers the General Electric Volunteers at GE's Engine Testing Plant near Peoples, Ohio. <laughs> 